morning. Good morning, welcome. <coughs> Please. Candidate number nine. We will start over here. And I will ask you to, um, this table of four, they have ordered a bottle of Caudrieux 2020 by Yves Kiron. Could you please serve it to them? You will have six minutes. This table of four have ordered a bottle of Caudrieux 2020 by Yves Kiron. Could you please serve it to them? You have six minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Roman. I'm a sommelier of this restaurant. In a minute, I will serve you wine. Can I ask who is the host? I'm the host. Thank you very much. from uh, Ipiro. Unfortunately, we don't have the Condrio, but we have two wines made from the same grape varieties, one from the Sun and the second one from Sun 2020. So all these, uh, all these grape varieties are included in Condrio. So we can uh, serve the wine for you, uh, which one do you prefer? For some of you, that's more business. I will some follow your recommendation. Okay, thank you very much. So for this wine, I have selected the classic glasses from Chef and Sandelier brand, which is called the Reveal Up, because it will help us to reveal all the hidden beautiful aromas of this wine. So please. Do you have any food restrictions or maybe preferences? Not at all. Thank you. Okay. This cork is in perfect condition. Do you mind if I taste the wine for you? Not at all. Okay. I think you will taste it. So the first course I will prepare is you propose you uh, scallops in thin slice with orange consomme because we have the very good acidity of this wine to be combinated with the acidity of the consomme. And plus we have a broad texture, quite oily, should be nicely complemented with umami taste of this beautiful wine. Please. You mind if I take the cork? As you wish. Okay. Yeah, I will leave the wine here, close to you, and we'll be happy to help you with the digestive or maybe with other wines recommendations. So thank you very much. We have a proposal of different types of spirits, but if you like, we can have the fortified wines. For example, we have the fantastic selection of Camderia, which is very specific for this region. And uh, one of the best Camderias that I can recommend you is uh, Chiacas. It's 2014, made of 100% Sinisteri, made in a very classic style with a refreshing acidity, with a bright uh, and very opulent aroma of dried apricot and peach. So, if you prefer dessert, we can serve this wine with the dessert, and I think it will be a nice combination. And uh, talking about this uh, beautiful wine, uh, the second uh, course, we started with the scallops. As the second course, I will propose you the grilled turbo in salt, 
with a creamy mushroom sauce and with creamy potato puree, just to combine the <coughs> style, this creamy style of this beautiful wine. And I think the acidity will be matching very good with the rich protein texture of food. So uh, if you need any recommendations about the spirits, uh, maybe after Comderia, but uh, after dessert, we can have some uh, additional thing, uh, some spirits like I prefer the good whiskey. We can go to the more classic and rich style, it's Motla from Speyside, and we can serve it uh, in the end of the dinner. So I'm staying here and the wine right here, close to you. I think that Marsan that we're having now is 2020. It reminds the style of Hungria because it has the same oily texture. It's quite rich, though it's pretty young wine now, but it will develop it in the glass, I think, very good. So please have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let me come over here. Have a sip of water if you want to. So, for the next task, we would like you to make a full organoleptic tasting of this wine. You will have four minutes for this. Please make a full organoleptic tasting of this wine. You have four minutes starting now. Thank you very much. We're having the red wine. We're having the red wine, which is clean and uh, Start right, the CO2 or any sediment. You can see the sediment here. It has a deep and beautiful ruby color uh, of the core, which is slightly changing to the rim. The rim has more, like I would say, garnet tones and uh, reflections uh, uh, in the color. So talking about, uh, so talking about the legs, the wine has very has very good viscosity, and you see that the legs slowly creeping down the glass. And I think the wine is developing in. in uh, Color, so we are talking about some age of wine, let's check in aroma. The wine is clean in aroma without defects. It has a, I would say, quite bright, I would say, even pronounced aroma with the predominance of, the predominance, I would say, the black fruits like uh, rumble, cherry, it's fresh and dried fruits. Uh, I would also notice plum. Complemented by hints of kerosene, so it has some greenish tones, it reminds me of the uh, green pepper. And say the vulgar pepper, some touch of leafy tone, but complemented with uh, some spiciness. It's like dusted with spices, very gentle, with like cinnamon and cloves, maybe with a touch of uh, black pepper. It also has, uh, it's complemented by hints of cherry wood, a bit smokiness, some earthy tone in aroma, which makes me to assume that this wine was aged. Uh, in an oak, but I will suggest it uh, while tasting the wine. And yeah, it's, the wine is definitely developing. Well, talking about the talent, we have the correct wine with those defects. It's bone dry, uh, complemented by a different, very fruit driven and fresh acidity uh, with, uh, I would say, well integrated tannins, which are fine grained. I would also say velvety tannins. We are complemented by very well balanced alcohol. The alcohol is a bit warm enough, but it's very well integrated in the structure of wine. Wine has the round and uh, round but moderate body uh, with a bit oily texture, oily fine grain texture, uh, which is balanced by the tannins and, uh, and the good acidity, the fresh acidity. So the flavors are quite intense too. We are, and again, we can talk about the fresh uh, plum, cherry, bramble. We can uh, say about some tons uh, of tobacco and uh, spices in, uh, in the taste. It has a lingering finish with the predominance of black fruits, like bramble and black plum again, which is some very, very gentle touch of, of pyrazine in, uh, in the finish. So I can say that this wine made in a classic way. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was fermented in steel with a temperature about 20, 30 degrees. Then it was aged in French oak barrel because we see some signs of oak aging. Uh, for maybe one year. I think it's wine made in a, a classic region. I think this wine is uh, from maritime climate. It's uh, old world, it's France, Bordeaux. Uh, the vintage like 2000, I think 2017. I think it's Senes Death. And it's wine made with the predominance of Merlot. Uh, and of course, with Cabernet Sauvignon. The alcohol is about 
13.5. I would recommend to serve this wine with short aeration for about 30 to 40 minutes. And to serve this wine in, in a classic water shape glass, but this regular lot shape is good too because it has some space to aerate this beautiful wine. And the temperature is about plus uh, 16 to 18 degrees, I think it will be uh, the most, uh, the better selection. So for the food pairing and the suggestion for the first course, I would dive. <coughs> Thank you. Now I would like to ask you to advise your manager, Mr. Poussier, whether you would buy this wine or not, and why. You have one minute for this. Okay. So Mr. Poussier, my recommendation is to buy this wine. I tell you a reason why. First of all, this wine is absolutely balanced and is ready now for for uh, for consumption, which is more important for the restaurants. We all know we're working in restaurants. We know that the main problem is now there are many that the green wines are not ready now. But this wine is quite balanced. I think it's young, but it has the appealing body. It has a very refreshing acidity and it has a very balanced standard. So you can drink it now, but it has also been for the next three to five years. I think it's absolutely unique in terms of gastronomy because we have the gentle tannins, velvety, which will be nice to complement it with the classic dish made of meat. I think we have uh, a very gentle touch of spiciness, which will be nice complemented with spicy meat, uh, which is very good and maybe quite unique for our restaurant. And I think this wine has potential, and I think with this wine, what is also good, we can serve it by the glass. So this wine, sometimes it doesn't need any food, doesn't need any appetizer, you can drink it by itself. And I think, I guess, that this wine has a very good price. In my terms, it has a uh, Thank you. Thank you. So, now we would like you to identify these four sparkling wines and name the method of production for each one. You will have five minutes for this. Okay. Please identify these four sparkling wines and name the method of production for each one. You have five minutes to talk now. So, sample number one, I will say that this method, first of all, the method, I will say this is Charmant, and I think it reminds me of the very classic style of Prosecco wine. Uh, it has a very, uh, I would say, made in uh, off dry style. So, uh, we see the tiny bottles, but it has a very refreshing, very fruit driven, and the very, let's say, style of Charmant method. So, we don't see it here. There is each uh, uh, leasy tone, some creamy tone, so I would say that this is Prosecco. Uh, Probably non vintage, uh, very young, and it's Charmant. Wine number four, I think this wine was made in the classic method, so the second fermentation went in bottle, and I think we're having to deal with a good style of young Champagne. Uh, I think it's uh, Champagne made in style with predominance of, uh, uh, of Chardonnay, so maybe it's I don't think it's a bottle blanc, but it's a combination of three great varieties, but it's classic method, second presentation model, it's champagne, probably non-vintage. So sample number three. I would say that we feel the very opulent and classic, the creamy style of this wine. I think it was made, uh, made uh, in a classic way, but the fermentation was made in uh, the southern region. And I think it could be the, the, the ancestral method. So it could be, let's say, the Mante de Limon. Uh, so Mazak grape variety. And I think, yeah, it's made of ancestral. So the fermentation starts in 10, but then it finishes in, uh, in the bottle. So it's pretty, let's say, classic method. 
and I would say, yeah, it's, uh, the aging was for about four months. And why number two? I think this is reservoir method. We can say that it's a It's a risk of wine, probably could be uh, from the southern region, not like Australia, which is part of the US from, from Australia. And I think it was fermented in Ted. And it has a lot of sweetness. It's very difficult for wine to make or made in this style. So I would say yes, it's uh, Shiraz from Australia, it's uh, made in a semi sweet um, style, and the fermentation is intact. So once again, we have Prosecco, number one, number four, we're having champagne, and not vintage, uh, made in plastic weight. Number three, we're having the ancestral method, where concentrated wine, and uh, I think it's Limoux. Uh, France and uh, number two, I think it's uh, tank or a fermenter, uh, and it's made in Australia. That means not in Shiraz, and it's semi sweet way. Thank you very much. Thank you. We think it's time for you to have something to eat. So, for the next task, we would like you to taste this dish okay. in front of you and suggest the best pairing from these wines. Mm -hmm. You will have three minutes for this. Including okay. Please taste the dish okay. in front of you and suggest the best pairing from these wines. Okay. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you very much. The other side, we need to support this, let's say, protein, the creamy texture of, of the dish. So we need to, to find also the wine with a full body, let's say, that can enhance this dish. My selection is wine number three, and I will explain why. Because, first of all, yes, we have the protein texture of this food, and we need to balance it by the good acidity. And wine number three has a very good acidity, but as I said before, it's uh, the dish we had a dense protein texture, so we need to support it. We need not to overwhelm the wine by the, the dish, or not to overwhelm and suppress the dish by the wine. So, wine number three has a the good acidity at the same time, but also a good body, which will support the texture of food. Why not selecting the wines number one, two, and three? The first one is too simple, and I think the dish will be overwhelming and suppressing this wine, this uh, its taste. So we won't fill the wine and won't fill our palate. Number two is too sweet, and I think it will be dominated here. We have a quite simple dish, so the sweetness will be predominant. Uh, why not? I'm not selecting number four. Not, number four has a good acidity too, but I think, in my opinion, for this dish, there is not enough body. So I prefer the wine with a more full body texture. And I think uh, we're having the uh, wine number three, the classic, uh, made by, let's say, the classic method, but the ancestral method, which give us the rich body, which can support the, this dense, creamy texture of food. And in the same time, it has a good acidity. It's not very opulent in aroma. And we have the, the dish, which is not very bright in taste, or not very bright in aroma. So they will balance each other. They will complement each other. And the body will support the texture. As I said before, the acidity will. Time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
We have one last exercise waiting for you. Now we would like you to identify these three beverages. Okay. You will have two minutes for this. Okay. Time is now. Okay, thank you very much. So, we have the, the first uh, uh, beverage is the spirit, and I think the, the basic wine, uh, the base here, it's a great wine, but it has the flower with anise. So we have, uh, we have different options because this kind of spirit is produced in different countries, uh, for example in Turkey. And I would suggest that uh, if we're talking about the spirit, it's a raki, classic raki from Turkey, uh, made with, uh, with the anise. Spirit number three is a liqueur. And it's, it also has the touch of anise. Uh, so I also suggest that this is Sambuca from Italy. Liqueur. I think the basic spirit for it is great spirit. Non-aged. And sample, no, uh, sample number two, it's a uh, spirit. And it has the gray uh, base. It's made of green. Time. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're free to go now. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.